We are in week three of our sermon series, uh, Fragile. And this has been the most uh, personal journey for me as I've studied and read and, and looked at scripture and looked at commentaries. I don't think I've ever been so affected by a sermon series as I have this because frag- our lives are fragile and our relationships are fragile. Uh, the world is fragile. Our, our finances are fragile. We live in such a fragile world. And our relationships can change so quickly. And we're just one phone call away sometimes from news that, that changes our lives. Things are so fragile. And so we need our Savior God more than ever. While we were still sinners, God sent his son Jesus to rescue us and to give us life. This one life that we have is fragile. And so this morning, I don't want us to bargain with God. When God is calling us to something, I don't want us to say, you know what, God, uh, can we wait until July? I think July looks better for me. I know you're calling me to this, but... Right now, it just looks like it's going to be better when I lose a few pounds or when, when I get out a little bit of debt. Then, I know what you're calling me to, but this morning, I don't want us to bargain with God because life is so fragile. We're not guaranteed one more minute. I was at a youth camp uh, years ago, and a pastor by the name of Francis Chan was there. He's a great pastor. I don't know him personally, uh, but he's just a tremendous pastor. And I was with about 50 other students at this camp, and he pulled out a rope. And uh, Pierce, can you help me out here? Um, just get the, the, end, the end of it and just go as far as it goes. His rope was much longer than this rope. And I'm going to steal this illustration that he used at summer camp, all right? On the end of this rope is um, some black tape. Everybody see the black tape? Everybody see it? Not if you see it, please. Not if you see it. All right? You see it? Okay. This black tape represents your life. So you were born, went to school, maybe you got married, you started your career, maybe then you had some grandkids, and then you retired, and then you graduated to somewhere, eternal life, right? So this is your life. You Come this way, Pierce. There, there, thank you. So we got it. This, this, was, this is what represents your life, this small little piece of tape. What you do here determines where you spend eternity. So this is eternity. So this rope, now Francis Chan's rope, went all the way around the, camp, uh, the, 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 the chapel. So what you do with this part of your life determines where you spend the rest of your life. And we pretend this rope just goes on and on and on and on eternity how long is eternity i asked my youth pastor when i was 12 how long is eternity now remember i grew up in kansas okay and so i said well doug let's just pretend that a sparrow starts out in kansas and and the sparrow starts to walk to the east coast the sparrow walks all the way to the east coast and dips its little beak in the Atlantic Ocean and gets one drop and then turns around and walks all the way to California and drops that drop into the Pacific Ocean and then that little sparrow turns around and goes back to the East Coast and gets another drop until the Atlantic Ocean is empty. Eternity hasn't even started yet. My 12 year old brain. Boom! (laughs) So what you do on this part, this, this is your life, you have one life, how are you living it? This determines this. Thanks, Pierce. What you do with this part of your life determines where you will spend eternity. Life is fragile. Amen? You have one life. And we want to live it for the glory of God. We want to love God with all of our heart and our mind and our soul and our strength. We want to do everything for his glory and for his renown. God sent his son Jesus 
while we were still sinners, let's not judge each other because someone sins differently than you. While you were still a sinner, God sent his son Jesus to give you life. How are you living this life? Every day when you wake up, what is on God's agenda for you? What is he calling you to do with this life he has given you? Prayer night, we've been singing a song called Remembrance. And we live our lives in remembrance to what God through Jesus did. And the song says, he's been so, so good to me. So, so good to me. I wrote it down. And then he says, just, what is it, Hannah? Oh, to think where I would be. Because he's been so, so good to me. Just think where I would be. You know where I would be today if it wouldn't, wasn't for God? I'd be living in my town, doing a job, and I'd been, I, I would be playing church. I'd be checking off the box, and I'd be going to the church I grew up in and trying to follow the rules and then living a double life. When I came to church, I'd be all cleaned up, and then after church, I'd be involved in sinful activities. But he has been so, so good to me. I don't know where I would be. I would tell you where my wife would be. She'd be in Port Arthur, Texas, living in sin as well, following her friends and following how her family was raised. And, and um, we talk about it all the time. Where we would be without God. He's been so, so good to me. And I want to live my life out of remembrance to that. You have one life. And how you live this life determines where you spend the rest of your life. We want to love God with our hearts and our souls and our minds and our strength. And then we want to love others with this life. It determines the rest. So this morning, I'm going to tell you right up front that this scripture that I felt God leading me to is so personal for me, and it's going to be heavy this morning. It's going to be heavy. This is not going to be one of those Pastor Doug's humorous, you know, I, I, one guy that just came to church said, man, I really love your church. The people were friendly, and he came on the day we had donuts. The donuts were great, and uh, man, it was like a cool, like, almost concert, and then there was like uh, some comedy, and then it's like, what comedy? So I was like, is that what I do? Am I like a, a comedian up here? <laughs> so it's going to be, today, it's personal. So, so good to me. I don't know where I would be without our Savior, God. So we're looking at the book of James this morning. James chapter 4, beginning with verse 11. James 4, beginning with verse 11 through 17. This is the word of the Lord this morning. Don't speak evil against each other, dear brothers and sisters. If you criticize and judge each other, then you are criticizing and judging God's law. Now, God's law is the law of liberty. It's the law that says, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So God's law says, love me, love God, and love others. Now, usually laws put us in chains. Usually laws restrict us, but this law sets us free. And so when it mentions God's law, this is what it's saying. Love God and love others. Don't speak evil against each other, dear brothers and sisters. If you criticize and judge each other, then you are criticizing God's law. What right do you have to criticize God's law? What right do you have to judge this law by judging each other? What right do we have to criticize another child of God. You have one life. Do you want to spend this life judging others? 
and criticizing others? Listen, I'm confessing to you this morning. I'm opening up my heart and confessing to this crowd today, this is my weakness. I can be a judgmental person. I can be critical. I wake up every single morning and ask God to purify my heart and to transform my mind, to see others as he sees them. Now, some of you will say, well, pastors aren't supposed to be human. So this morning, it's personal for me because I tend to be judgmental. And this is what happened. I've never had a, a life and death experience where some people say, my life passed before my eyes. I, I, it's never happened to me. But this was pretty close. And this was pretty benign, though. I sitting in my living room with some friends, and we were watching a, one of those singing shows. And as we were watching one of the singing shows, uh, one of the celebrities came up, and someone in the room went, whoa, she's gained a lot of weight. She's pretty fat. And she's rich. She's got so much money. She has really let herself get away. I don't know why it hit me so hard. But this celebrity doesn't know us. This celebrity doesn't know what we were saying in our living room. But it was so judgmental, and it was so critical, and it was a mirror into my soul. I've done that. I'm not maybe said it out loud, but in my spirit, I've looked at some of my colleagues that I went to high school with and on Facebook, you know, 30-some years later. <laughs> Whoa, they're pretty. I, I've judged that way. And it just broke my heart how ugly that is. I don't want to live my life judging and criticizing because I am saying to God that I know better than you. I'm going to go ahead and judge that person that you created. I'm going to live my life judging and criticizing others. I see you're not convinced. I came upon a person and another person talking and I the closer I got I realized one of them was talking about me I went what kind of lame life do you have to talk about me <laughs> oh, seriously me I'm broken I'm a clay pot amen we we're all uh, really you all the time in your day and you're just, okay so the closer I got, man, this guy was really going in on me, judging me and criticizing me. Now, he's a little bit shorter, so I decided to walk up a little bit closer and kind of like hover over him. Now, the person that he was talking to, he caught my eye. And this guy goes just white as a sheet. He was just like kind of looking at the guy like, uh -huh, uh -huh. Get up a little bit closer to the guy. He turns around. We go eye to eye. As he was just attacking me judging me, criticizing me. I didn't know I was that bad of a person, to be honest. We go eye to eye. Some of what he was saying, I could see what, what he was saying. You know, I'm not perfect. So it was really intimate. It was really personal. We were eye to eye. We decided to meet. and We've been talking and we've been meeting and we haven't worked everything out. But you know how hurtful it is to be on the other side of it? When someone's judging you and you hear it, the critique... I've done that. I have judged and I've criticized other people. This morning, I want to make a declaration that how I'm going to live my life that determines where you live the rest of your life is I want to love God. And I want to love you and my neighbors. I want to stand upon his foundation this morning that is good and pleasing and perfect your job it continues is to obey the law not judge whether it applies to you God alone who gave the law is the judge he alone has the power to save or to destroy so what right do you have to judge your neighbor what right do you have to judge your neighbor Doug God is in charge of human destiny, amen? We believe this, that God is in charge of human destiny. What right do we have to question it? Our job, our call, our opportunity is to love God. 
because he's been so, so good to us. Just think where you would be without the grace and mercy of God. So what right do you have to question God and his law to love him and to love others? Verse 13, look here who say, today or tomorrow, we're going to a certain town and we'll stay there a year. We'll do business there and make a profit. How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Here's the the centerpiece scripture of the morning. This is what led me to this passage. Your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while, then it's gone. Life is fragile. It's here a little while, then it's gone. Some translations say mist. Some translations say vapor. Your life is like a fog. Here a little while, and then gone. As I mentioned earlier, we moved from Kansas City to California. We moved to a town called Pismo Beach. So that was our first introduction to California okay no one's been there it is beautiful I thought that would be like whoa yeah man Pismo you know, that was beautiful little beach town uh, classic beach town kind of a throwback beach town and we were just overwhelmed a, a family in the church had a home and that they, they let us rent and it was one block from the Pacific Coast Highway which meant it was one block and a step from the ocean and so all these uh, Kansas folk, we would just walk out in the beach and just like stand and just look at the ocean almost every day. And one June, we had the coldest winter we've ever had. Okay, that was funny, I thought, but, but the, 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 the 11 o'clock, you go, go, so let me say it again. One June, we had the coldest winter, something called June gloom. And the marine layer would come in in the morning, and it was heavy. It was thick. It was, it's this, this wet fog, like a, a mist. So every morning, it would roll in into our neighborhood. And it was really, really heavy and really thick. So it was like 61 degrees on June 30th. You know, it was just a really odd thing for a Kansas boy to experience. But about mid-morning or late afternoon, it would be gone, just like that. Like it was never there. That's how I was introduced to the scripture. That's the way our life is like. And it really burnt into my heart what that means. It was so quick. It was so heavy. And it, was, it just felt like it was surrounded. And, it was, and then all of a sudden, it just blew off, off offshore and, and probably into the valley. Your life is like that kind of a fog. You're not guaranteed another minute. What you ought to say then is this, if the Lord wants us to, we will do this or that. Otherwise, you are boasting about your own pretentious plans, and all such boasting is evil. So do you want to live your life boasting about your own plans? Do you want to live your life bragging about all the great things that you're going to do or that you do? Are you that person that loves to one-up? Someone at a party, if they're talking about a story, you just can't wait for them to finish and go, well, that reminds me of, do you want to live your life boasting about what you're going to do or what you have done? Life's too fragile for that. We need to say, God willing, Lord willing, this is what I will do with the rest of my life. And some of you will say, well, then are we not supposed to make plans? No, we're not saying that this morning. We are saying God holds all plans. That in his presence all things are possible. So we bring everything we have. That's our love for God. Our love for God is this this vertical relationship. We bring everything to God. Our thoughts, our dreams, our plans, our families. We bring everything to God and then he directs it to love others. So we love God. It's the right angle. We love God and we love others. This relationship affects these relationships sometimes we flip it we let these relationships affect these relationships and these relationships then affects this relationship it needs to start here this 
affects this. This determines this. And so we ought to say, God's plan, God's will for me is, then we want to know about it. We want to listen. You're not boasting. You're just proclaiming the victory that God has already given you. So do you want to live this life boasting <laughs> about how great you are? Or do you want to get into his presence and not bargain with God, but say, say yes to God? Last verse. Remember, it is a sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. Ooh, I told you it was going to be heavy. We're talking about judgment and criticism and a, a fragile life. And now we end with, remember, it is a sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. So this is what's called a sin of omission. We talk a lot about sins of commission or sins that we commit. We commit murder. We commit adultery we commit this is a sin of omission this is something that we omit god calls you to something that you know you need to do but you bargain with god yeah, yeah today's not the day maybe may 5th may, may 5th looks a little bit better for me god you, you actually don't know what's going on god i'm i'm really tired and i just want to watch netflix and so I know it's people need in Cambodia, but no, nah, I'm just, uh, what right do we have to bargain with God who has our best interests in mind for what he offers in love is far better than anything else we will ever find. Why would we go, hey, yeah, today's not good. Check with me in 2019. I'm wide open sin of omission i was driving by a park a few years ago saw a mom and probably five kids and they were just all over the park and they were just i could tell these kids were really really uh a handful for this this mom and they were just everywhere and and i thought my family would be great for this family my church family would be great with this family but I got to get home. I know God, I see it. I, I, I got to get home. But I paused, parked, went over and said, ma'am, I know this is weird. Weird white ball guy coming up on you. I know it's weird. But I just, and again, this is going to be weird, but I just feel like God paused me. And, and before I could finish, she said, I just left my abusive husband. She had a cut. She had some bruises. And I got in my car, and I ran out of gas here. And so I just had to get out and let my kids play. Now, this is a long story, and I'll shorten it. Our church got involved. Our family got involved. And year after year after year, she received a job, a car, a place to stay a family to belong in. You do the same thing. I'm not putting myself on a platform, but I want to tell you there's some times where I have bargained with God and God's led me to talk to somebody in a Walmart parking lot, but I thought, yeah, no. I, I got to get home. I got to get over to Wingstop. I don't have time. For me, that's a sin. When I disobey in God's eyes, procrastination is disobedience. Sorry, aren't you glad you came to church this morning? In God's eyes, procrastination is disobedience. In fact, your good intentions don't equal obedience either. Even deciding to obey can be equal to disobedience. We need to act. We need to take a step. We need to extend 
a hand. If God is directing you to do something, do it. When we refuse to obey God, sometimes we withhold a blessing for somebody else and for ourselves. You have one life. How are you living it? Because it determines where you will spend the rest of it. This is personal for me this morning. I've exposed to you, I've confessed to you this judgmental, jaded perspective, this critical perspective that I can seem to have. And so I don't want this to be just another Sunday where we sit in one of these chairs and we hear a little comedy routine or we hear a little sermon and we're like, yeah, that was a good sermon and we, we, we judge the product. Last week, eh, but this week, good sermon. It's more than that this morning. I'm proclaiming to you today, I'm making my declaration today that I'm going to love God with all my mind, heart, soul, and strength, and I'm going to love you. And I need some people to stand up with me. I, and I mean not just like casually and not like, well, I'm standing in my heart, Pastor Doug, and, and, and when I get home, oh, I, and I'm with you when I get home. No, I'm talking about today, Colin's going to come and we're going to sing a song. And as Colin sings, and I want you to remain seated, I want you to stand. This is a turning point for me. This is a turning point for our church. Because we need to declare it today. We need to stand today and quit bargaining with God. And we need to say, I'm standing firmly on this foundation. And I'm not just saying stand. I want you to stand and take a step somewhere. So maybe you have to take a step forward. Maybe you have to take a step in the back. But I want you to move from where you're even standing. We want to declare this morning boldly that we're going to love God and we're going to love each other and we're not going to use this life for our own desires and our own brand. We're going to use this life as it was intended to be lived. So as we sing, stand and take a step somewhere. Come forward. And I'm not going to say, and, and close your eyes and no one looking around. I want everyone to look around. Yeah. This is what the family of God yeah. is like. Yeah. So let's sing and let's stand yeah. and let's move and let's make the proclamation. Don't do it because your neighbor's doing it. Because it won't last. Let's participate in what God is doing. Go ahead.